What's up guys? <laughs> Welcome back to Natalie from Kalu. Today the DJ host Natalie, co-host Kevin. We're missing our special guest. We go get off. <laughs> special guest. Penny. Penny. What is she? Oh, it's got to get go and get go. What's up guys? Today Natalie and I are getting back into our coolest prehistoric and extinct reptile series. Do you remember who we did last time? Chronosaurus. You remember Chronosaurus? Yep. You do? Uh -huh. <laughs> and if you guys want to watch that video on Chronosaurus, they can watch it right... Yeah. Right there. And as always, Natalie and I have drawn an absolutely beautiful picture of this one. So as you can see, it's a snake. Ready to tell them what it is? Today's video is on Jagantophis, who was a massive snake. This one's gonna be cool. Are you ready to get into it? Yeah. Let's show you. So Jagantophis was first discovered in 1901 by paleontologist Charles William Andrews in Africa. That's where the fossils were first discovered. And for over a hundred years, Jagantophis was thought to be the largest snake to ever exist. But we know who the largest snake to ever exist was. Until 2009 and the discovery of Titanoboa. Yeah. You remember Titanoboa? Yeah. He's the biggest snake to ever exist. Yeah, but that guy is bigger than that guy. It's not bigger, but it was still massive. And we'll get more into how massive it was in the appearance. Jagantophis is actually Greek for giant snake. Yeah. Which is pretty fitting, because it was a giant snake. So Jagantophis was in the Matsidae family, which included other large snakes like the Matsuae and Wanambi. You remember when we did Wanambi? No. You don't remember Wanambi? Remember the picture of his skeleton wrapped around that big old uh, wombat looking thing? No. You don't remember Wanambi? No. I'm gonna have to show you a picture of him. Now do you remember him? Oh, yeah. yeah. He was another big snake. And Jagantophis was around some 40 million years ago. 40 million years ago. Around the Eocene Epoch. <gasps> That's huge. That's a long time ago. Oh my god, that is a longer than that! Oh, this thing is. Alright, and let's get into the coolest part of this snake. It's appearance. As we had mentioned, Jagantophis was a massive snake, substantially less than Titanoboa, but still bigger than any of the biggest snakes around today. <laughs> Do you remember what the two biggest snakes around today are? The longest and the heaviest? The longest, the reticulated python. The most massive, the green anaconda. What is the heaviest? the green anaconda. Estimates have put this massive snake anywhere between 30.5 feet and 35.1 feet. That is massive. Bigger than a reticulated python. I do not like get eaten by that. And weighing half a ton. I wouldn't want to get eaten by him either. <laughs> that is as big as your school bus. So your school bus in the morning, it's about that long. Do you imagine a snake that long? That's crazy. Now, like Wanambi, with only fossils to go off and no living relatives of theirs, scientists aren't 100% sure of what like colors and patterns they would have had. What kind do you think they would have had? A giant rainbow snake? Good. All right, and let's move on to habitat. As we had mentioned, Jagantophis was around during the Eocene Epoch, when the Earth was a much different looking place. Because you know, and you'll learn in school, the Earth has changed over millions of years. Like, changed. The first fossils were found in Africa, but scientists also believe they would have spread out all through what is today Algeria, Egypt, the Southern Sahara, and Pakistan. All those places. Pakistan? Yes. Which are all very hot places. Hot places. I, I thought you would have been to Afghanistan. Afghanistan, not Pakistan. 
Now, you may think like, wow, these snakes lived in total deserts, but there was actually many rivers, creeks, water areas, all going through this terrain. It is thought that jagged tophus would have spent a lot of time in these water areas, kind of like a green anaconda, because snakes need water also, right? Yeah. To drink. Also, like Titanoboa, they would have used these waterways to their advantage because it was much easier for a snake that massive to swim through the water at high speeds rather than moving all that mass on land. Yeah. It would have made them slow and sluggish. But and guess what? What? We can't have a Komodo dragon in this. She's a Komodo dragon? Yeah, good look at that. That's a Komodo dragon. A little Komodo dragon. Oh. Because dragging half a ton across the land would have been difficult. That'd be like you trying to carry like that couch across the ground. Think you could do that? No. <laughs> and let's move on to our final piece. Diet. What did this massive snake eat? Oh my god, he could eat a whole dinosaur, um saltwater crocodiles? Yes, yeah, saltwater crocodiles, a whole house. Oh wow, a whole house. And people. He can eat anything he can find. Or sharks. He or can, sharks? He can eat anything in that sea. A snake that big, maybe. Scientists believe they would have fed on prosobidines, such as merithrium, which were like these mini elephant looking things. Look how weird looking that thing is. Yeah. That's why I said it's like a mix between a hippo and an elephant. And, like you had kind of mentioned, prehistoric crocodilians. They were ambush hunters, and they would sit by the edge of the water until some unfortunate soul came down to take a drink. And that's when they did got Where they came out and lunged at it, kind of like a snake when you see a snake strike. They would bite into it and then kill it by constricting it. Kind of like boas and pythons. All right, guys, and that does it for Gigantophis. Yep. If you guys enjoyed this video or learned something, make sure to give us a like and consider subscribing for more of our reptile content. Yep. All right, guys, and we'll see you on Saturday. Saturday. Bye, guys. Bye.